Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On the Mic with Mike. We are the best business radio program around. Why? Because we get the best guests. We talk to entrepreneurs, business owners, people who have vision about their journey as well. Up next with us, we have Scott Turnbull, the owner of Tech Tavern. Scott, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Welcome. Hello. Yes, hello. Thank there you, you go. for having okay. me. Okay, there you go. All righty. So uh, let that. us know your business and tell us what you do, and then we'll dive into some of the good, juicy stuff that's happening out there with you. Sure thing. Uh, I run Tech Tavern. We're a small uh, boutique LLC for IT strategy, consulting, planning, management, and we do supplemental IT development and development operations for companies that need that supplemental IT skill coming into their, their company. So let me ask you, so... Um, you're, this is a new company for you, correct? It is. I just came out of the nonprofit space for six years. I was in a federal uh, national nonprofit at the federal level. Prior to that, I've been in public safety and at universities and software engineering as well. Okay. So what's it when, when you look out in the landscape, what's the biggest problem that you see that caused you to think of uh, Tech Tavern? Yeah, I think that we're at a juncture here where technology is yet again shifting. It's coming from, uh, it's integrated in operations in every business that you can possibly imagine in ways that it hadn't been before. And we all just had this, this object lesson in that when the pandemic hit, businesses that were comfortable with uh, being able to switch to IT, whether that be online ordering or remote work or however it was, they succeeded in the pandemic in ways that businesses were not integrated with technology uh, could not. Um, they're integrated in plumbing for down to like looking for pipes behind the wall to solar panel installations to IoT deployments. Technology touches every facet of, of work life out there, even things that we haven't traditionally considered technology based. And that ability to react quickly, to integrate some skills into your business, that's been lacking for people. We're still, old school thinking is still focused on mobile apps and the web app and just software as if that's the only thing that needs to happen. And I think the new thinking is how do you integrate technology in your business, which builds efficiency, it builds profit, it lets you run smoother and uh, more agile. When you see a business owner comes up to you and I always ask people, what, what are the streets saying out there from in the tech space? What, what does the world look like to you guys now that it didn't look like before Corona showed up? Uh, certainly remote and online, the importance of online work. I think we've all been there who've been in the um, in technology before, but the, it's heightened for everybody. The importance of ubiquitous uh, broadband coverage for everybody, whether you live in rural areas, in the middle of a, a city, uh, uh, underserved population in the middle of uh, poorly covered areas of a city are often an afterthought. And we need to start thinking about those populations more. So those are the things that are not covered. Um, and that was really transformative when we hit that when we had the pandemic. And then just comfort with using uh, cloud-based services or Google Docs or uh, getting your data uh, shared between people that might be in your business, that all sort of, that all became a barrier for a lot of people to run their business on a day-to-day -day basis. And we should be able to access one another in a community like Richmond or any other community you're in. You, you have some local IT skill and, and we're too disconnected from one another. So even though we went remote, we in some ways depended on local expertise more than we ever had because we needed people who trusted us, who we trusted, who understood the context of our life and our business in ways that we didn't need before. So even though it's remote, I think local IT expertise uh, is more important now than ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Turnbull is here with us with Tech Tavern. Business owners know what they know. And they don't know what they don't know. And they're always like, oh, my business is, there's nothing like my business. So mine is unique. No, sir, your business is not unique. When you talk to business owners, what's the number one thing that you have to school them on? Because you're like, this is a hidden danger out there. And sir, madam, you need to be aware of it. One thing that comes to mind now is this whole ransomware thing. I'm starting to hear that a lot of small businesses People, you know, they're getting hit $2,500, $5,000. Uh, hey, we're holding your content, your site hostage. Let's talk about security and, and what business owners need to know out there from your standpoint. 
Yeah, that's a compelling piece. First of all, they need to demystify it, right? They need to not worry. I think people check out mentally on it because they think it's just too big of a thing for them to handle. But engaging a technical professional that can help them plan through that, there's really just a couple of stages they need to do. First, what's your fallback? Let's plan for no security first. What happens if it all goes uh, south and you need to reestablish your systems? There's probably easy ways to do that with some simple backup strategies, with some alternative services you can turn to, and with securing your information. That's baseline. And then you can move into how are you managing passwords? Do you use a password manager maybe for your business? Um, what's, your, what's, your data pri what's your data privacy policy? And that sounds like a big word, but it really just can be, do you a uh, quick review of, are you collecting information you don't need to be collecting that creates a vulnerability in the first place? It's really not that, we need to demystify. It's not that hard to work through from sales to even small businesses, small local contractors that might be out there who don't wanna lose their, uh, their customer, um, uh, customer relationship database or uh, credit card numbers. It's really kind of easy to walk through that process. You just have to set a little time aside to do it. But I think that cybersecurity piece is something everybody is, is rightfully concerned about. But sticking your hand, head in the sand isn't going to do it. Uh, I know we need 35,000 cybersecurity professionals in Virginia alone to meet the needs of the next decade. Uh, we're developing those. We've got that talent locally, but we've been, we need to begin to integrate that into how can we efficiently build security workflows into what we're doing. And engaging with companies like Tech Tavern is a great way to do that. And how can people find Tech Tavern out there? You go to tech-tavern.com and all the information will flow. I'm just online right there. Or you can email me at info, uh, info at tech-tavern.com and I'll be happy to get back to you. And we can open up a conversation, discuss what the needs are, create some kind of plan that's right for you and your business. And we can apply some sort of strategy behind the, the needs of your business to walk you forward, make you feel more secure and feel like you have some efficiency in your return on your investment. There you go. Mike King, Scott Turnbull here with us. He's talking all things tech and the things that he could help you with because a lot of times businesses are vulnerable out there. And they're just, you know, praying that something doesn't happen. And we see that something happens all the time. Most of the time, it doesn't make it to the media. People just suffer, suffer in silence. But you're saying have a plan. You know, the, the whole idea back in the day, now this is where, you know, you start dating yourself. There would always be a computer in the office where, you know, the IT department was just like, whatever you do, don't unplug that one. And why not? Because the guy who was here before me said, don't unplug that one. We live in a world now with remote learning, you know, conversations here and there, whether it's cell phones, you know, we are moving at lightning quick speed after being on timeout for a year and a half. And the whole idea of security and IT services to business owners just kind of sticking their head back out there saying, okay, a lot has changed in the last 18 months. A lot of businesses just didn't make it. You know, and I tell businesses, you know, congratulations to you. Now, what does the next six, eight, 12 months look like? From your standpoint, what are some of the things on the horizon for small businesses that they need to be on the lookout for? I mean, I think that they need to get efficient and sort of develop a way to vet uh, online services that are being sold to them, right? That everyone feels buried under this avalanche of, let me sell you this CRM, let me sell you this database, let me sell you this marketing opportunity, your uh, or a new sales force uh, uh, plugin or something like that. You just overwhelm. Let me rewrite re re your entire site. Get with someone who's going to take a minute to to listen to what's going on with your business, the context of your history, what your true needs are. I think uh, that that looking at leveraging common systems that can easily blow past the things that are, are not truly value add to your business and truly unique. What you said before about everyone thinking about their business is unique. I'll differ just in this uh, list this way. 90% of that is absolutely true. 90% you're not entirely unique, but that 10% is unique and that's where your true value lies. So you need to operationalize that 90% down to all, as, as little as you can and get to how are you going to deliver on that 10% that's truly unique, whether that's your style of customer service, whether that's your end user population, population, whether it's a type of service you, you, you serve, you need to operationalize that down to something that is a low footprint, say secure and easily manageable for you as possible. So what you're saying is the 90 is everyone. The 10% is what drives revenue. That's it makes right. you different than everyone else. 
That's exactly right. One of my my ESPN Richmond here, Mike Scott here with us as well from Tech Tavern. We're here daily when uh, ESPN Richmond 106.1. I'm also on the Choice 105.3 is where you can find us at Mike King Biz Radio. We are here offering uh, airtime to nonprofits, community organizations, and business owners talking business and all the things in between. All right, Scott, so you had an idea to start a business. How do you make that come true, man? A lot of people have ideas. How do you, what, what's the steps? Really, it's it's not it's not magic. You get out, you register your LLC, you create your business plan. So who are your target markets? What are the core services you're going to offer? How are you going to touch con, connect with people who need those core services? And then it's just grit. You just need to keep on it. The truth is there's more market out there than there are businesses to meet that need, especially for small businesses. It's there. Um, you have to find a way to do it without losing all your time because it, uh, this can be a huge time sink and you can spend your time everywhere. But uh, leverage local professional organizations like leverage local nonprofits, uh, look at other partnerships doing similar type of work and start to think outside the box of, of um, what you might do. I'm going to, I'll bring up a quick example of a, uh, I'm mentoring a, a startup group right now. They do um, tracking in, in, in the real world of uh, public safety vehicles. Vehicles, so fire trucks or police cars or something like that. They have a little tracker on there that tracks it, that tracks it around. But I'm working with them because that there's no reason that, that that needs to be public safety only. That could be garbage trucks. That could be even in logistics. It could be your your Amazon delivery truck. It could be anything that needs tracking, real time tracking in the field. So thinking about your adjacent uh, your adjacent uh, verticals, your adjacent industries. Uh, thinking about how you can be how that service can be adapted to industries that you hadn't considered before. I think um, that network of other professionals that you're going to engage with. That's important for realizing how to get out and sell your service. And then at the end of the day, stick to your mission, stick to your guns, know what your value is, uh, foster your foster the relationships that are going to help bring your, your business forward. At the end of the day, yes, it's business, but all business is really relationship-based. It's trust-based, especially when it comes to IT. And it's so, true. When you talk about the mission, you know, sticking to the plan, a lot of people have mission creep because a lot of times it comes with a few extra dollars and businesses need revenue. I typically don't do B, but for you today, I'm going to start next thing you know, I'm, I'm, I'm off of the scope of what I'd normally do off into this thing. And you can become, you can start running down a tangent because that's not your core competency. Let's talk a little about an engagement with uh, tech tavern. What's the process look like? Rain, you know, I give you a call. Hey, you know, Scott, house is on fire. Well, I don't even think it's on fire. I think, hey, Scott, I think I'm pretty good. What's the what's the process? So the real process is getting to know you and your business. So I did some advisory with Stafford County, Virginia, on the launch of the new uh, Virginia smart, smart Community Test Bed. Um, and I sat down with them and talked through, okay, what is what are your core needs? Who are the businesses coming in for you? What kind of technologies are you using? And getting to know them and what they're, get to the point where, how do I know what success looks like for them? When you're a consultancy or an IT services company like myself, what I really need to know is what does success look like and why are you doing that? If I, I can determine how to progress to that point, once I know what success looks like and what's important about it to you, but without that, uh, I can't really do it. So the, the honest truth is it all starts with an engaged conversation why, did, why is this important to you? And what does it look like if we did a great job with it? And then I can backtrack through what resources it does it take, what a plan might look like. You would review that to see if it fits your time and budget. If not, we iterate through a discussion of what might a bigger or a smaller footprint look like, um, what the outcome would be if we did that. What you just said, if there's a mismatch, there's actually a great way for small LLCs where we just engage partner LLCs who might do that. And you might say, listen, I don't do that, but I know and recommend a really great LLC that does that work in, in that tech stack or something like that, I can vouch for their work. You can you can even do some sort of finder's fee for them or something, or maybe business business contract to, to work with them. There's lots of options you can do. And uh, YouTube University is there for everybody. So that is true. Yeah, you can learn that stuff very easily. It's really not complex. It's just, it takes grit, it takes attention, and it takes time. When you looked at there, you were starting the business, how did you determine what was going to be the marketplace for you? What were the businesses that you were going to try and capture? Yeah, so I, uh, probably not like this, not 
dissimilar to a lot of people. I have a career. I'm an older man, right? So I have a career behind me. I have some some some. I've worked a lot with with cities uh, in a public private partnerships with corporations That's looking to do civic interest par- projects. That's so taking that nice. experience, I knew that that was my contact network. I knew that that was where my expertise was, not just mm-hmm. in terms of technology, but in terms of. Uh, managing uh, those end user populations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the mic, mic no, we had a pause like, for a like moment. We, it stopped, is what I'm saying. All righty, we. That's fine. You're an old man, right? So I'm not, probably not. Well, for myself, I look at my skill set and what my previous network was. And I think that that's where all small business owners need to start. Who's my network? What kind of skill sets do I have to offer them? So for me, it's data services. It's online. Uh, it's uh, it's online applications. It's uh, IoT devices. It's cybersecurity and a few other core, uh, core pillars like that. So working through the network of professional contacts that I've had before, the professional contacts that I know, uh, that reaching out to them and establishing a conversation about what project we can work together. It really is just relationships. IT is no, people treat IT like it's a different kind of business, but the truth yeah. is core business is core business. It's all relationships. All righty. Oh, and the mic with Mike Scott Terminal is here with us as well. All right. So you come from the uh, the nonprofit where it must be, it must be in a DNA of your family. There, shout out to the missus uh, with, with that one right there. We talked a lot of nonprofits. Uh, give the nonprofits out there some words of wisdom because, you know, everyone knows they're the big ones. The big ones have a lot of help. And then I talked to a ton of the smaller ones who are doing great things, but man, they are they're doing it by magic and duct tape and glue. Give them some words of advice that, and from your years of experience on how to make it maybe from an IT perspective, but in general. Yeah, thanks. I, I've spent my, my entire life has been in public service in one, one form or another. Um, and so I think most of them know it. First of all, I think, uh, you know, most nonprofits know this, but they're a business like anyone else. So they need to, nonprofit businesses are still businesses. They need to run operations just like any other business out there. When it comes to IT, partnering with people uh, who can bring the cost of their services down, but looking at efficiencies, every business should look at, a, especially nonprofits, should look at their, their user base and how they can build efficiencies to do cost recovery first to free up capital to be able to apply that to uh, direct services or growing other IT services if they need it. If they need it, but um, having that, uh, there, I think the nonprofit sector is 1.2 trillion in the U.S. alone. Uh, so there's there's money out there, and those that's real business making real impact. Um, I think that the seeking out public-private partnerships are the new, uh, really where it's gone for everybody. So we, we have businesses who want to be responsible, but they need to partner with the right organization. When they're looking to do that, they want to know their money is going to be used effectively, that there's a plan in place, and that whatever project they might enter into jointly is going to be managed well. So all the things of project management acumen, uh, spending correctly on IT, making sure that it's serving the target, the end user population well, those are all part and parcel to, to why I think success is for nonprofits that are integrating technology in some meaningful way. One of Mike with Mike Scott, how can people find you once again? They can just find me at tech-tavern.com or you can email me with through info at tech-tavern.com. Alrighty, uh, one last thing. One thing that a person could hang their hat on it that a business owner needs to do right now, you know, before anything else that you'd advise them on. I think you need to have your your sort of business plan together and what core services you need internally to do that. Uh, you know, the, the, the immediate, most people enter into a, a business, they have that professional skill that's required to deliver the service. What mo- probably almost every small business owner has said to you is what they're overwhelmed by is payroll or running tax, you know, running their taxes or anything like that. So again, YouTube University, lean into other entrepreneurs who've been in this space for a little while about uh, advice on how to structure that. Um, but really the, the big advice is get those lateral skills necessary to become an entrepreneur because entrepreneurship is hard. That is true. Scott, we'd like to thank you for coming on. One of Mike with Mike Scott Terminal is here with us. Scott, thanks. A lot. Take care now. Thank you. You have a great day. All right. One of Mike with Mike, like to thank our show sponsors, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Comer is out there. Also, uh, Andy Taylor from Junk Cluggers and Tom Trudy, your credit card guy. I'd like to thank those guys for supporting the program. Allows us to do those great things. Thanks now. Take care. Mm-hmm.